He's got the toys. He's got showmanship. And he's got sex appeal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the great Southwest, here's the guru of gadgets, the dapper and dashing Don Bain, the Gadget Professor. Gadget Professor. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Gadget Professor Show. My name is Don Bain, and of course, I am the Gadget Professor. Well, uh, I'm happy to say we made it in the studio today. It was not easy, but uh, here we are. And uh, as you know, I, I much prefer to work out of the studio than out of my home because we got all these remote controls and stuff here, and I just sit and do my thing, and I got Wild Man Mike behind the controls, and it makes it easy for me. So if you're new to the Gadget Professor, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. As you may or may not know, the Gadget Professor is now heard in 170 countries around the world, so I'm honored, and that's all because of you. Now, every Thursday evening, uh, we come up with a brand new episode, and we talk about all kinds of gadgets. Sometimes they're electronic in nature, sometimes they're com computer in nature, sometimes they're, they're not. We also bring in a lot of the uh, current news, the current hacking news, which I do have a few today. I always have those. And uh, we also talk about precautions that you could take to uh, keep your security and uh, your computer work safe or as secure as you can make it today. It's nothing that uh, anybody can make 100% proof, unfortunately. And we try to bring you some uh, interesting gadgets that will make your life and the life of your loved ones fun. So let's, uh, let's start off. Uh, as you know, you can tune into The Gadget Professor on our webpage, and that would be thegadgetprofessor.com, thegadgetprofessor.com. And what you can do is you can scroll down, and midway you'll see a, a hot button there, a hot link called Newsletter. If you click on the newsletter and put your email address there, what happens is every Thursday evening, as soon as the show is posted, you will receive in your inbox, in your email, for free, all the URLs hot linked about everything that we discussed on the Gadget Professor show. And that's a handy thing to have because I talk about a lot of different things in each show. And uh, you might not need something now, but in five weeks from now, you might want it so you can go back to that newsletter and just click it and it's all hot link. So that's, that's a cool thing. The other thing is too, if you'd like to email me, you can email me anytime you want, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. My email address is thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com, thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. I answer all my email. It won't be the second you send it, but I guarantee you, I will get back to you. You can send me questions, suggestions for the show, things you like, things you don't like. Hopefully you won't, you'll like everything, but uh, speaking of liking, you could like me on Facebook. We have our Facebook page, and that's, uh, whoops, that uh, kind of disappeared. Let's refresh that. Uh, it would be uh, Facebook forward slash The Gadget Professor. And uh, again, uh, my show is actually posted on the Facebook page as soon as it's ready. And I also have a lot of photographs and different things that uh, I do during the week that I put up uh, videos and all kinds of interesting things. Speaking of interesting things, to me, one of the most interesting pages that we actually put out is our Rebel Mouse page. In fact, as you all know, that's one of my favorite pages, Rebel Mouse forward slash Gadget Professor. What this does is it takes all our tweets, and we tweet all day long. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, that's easy to do. It would be at Gadget Professor. Follow me on Twitter, at Gadget Professor. Now, what this Rebel Mouse page does is it takes all those tweets, which are only 91 words, I believe, and uh, it takes every single tweet, and it actually makes a pictorial of it. So you can go on this Rebel Mouse page, that would be Rebel Mouse forward slash Gadget Professor, and this changes every 15 minutes, maybe every 10 minutes. It's very dynamic, and it shows all the latest gadgets that have come out this day. Whatever day it is, whatever's new, uh, bang, you will see it on this Rebel Mouse page. And if you're interested in something, all you have to do is click on it, and it will bring you right to the uh, full article. So uh, the Rebel Mouse page is really cool, totally free. None of this costs you any money. The Gadget Professor show is free. The uh, email uh, newsletter that you get is free. And everything that we show you here, for the most part, is free. And now let's get right into it today. Uh, we always uh, feature our hacking news first. And uh, unfortunately, there's a lot this week. Uh, this just broke uh, early in the morning. Apple urges hacked users to change their passwords following a hack that saw iPads, iPhone, Macs across Australia compromised and held to ransom. Apple has urged affected iCloud users to change their passwords. Well, anytime anybody's been hacked, you definitely want to change your password. Last week, we had a company called eBay 
and they begged you also to change your password. As a matter of fact, I would recommend, crazy as it sounds, changing your password if you want. I would do it every week. What's the big deal? Uh, but there's just no end in sight to this. And these are companies that are well known. Everybody's heard of Apple. The hack affected a number of Apple users across Australia and New Zealand, and New Zealand, as well as people using Australian devices overseas, and saw iPhones, iPads, and Macs hit with messages threatening to completely wipe out the device unless you send them a hundred bucks. And it was U.S. a hundred bucks. They still like that American cash. It was paid to a fake PayPal account in the name of Oleg Pliss. Apple has released a statement on the hack to ZDNet advising users to change their passwords, contact the company's customer service team, or Apple Store for more assistance. So uh, that will be in the show notes, and you can read all about it. Speaking of hacking, uh, another company that we've all heard and like to use is uh, Spotify. Spotify was hacked, and they say, I don't believe this, but they say there was just one user targeted. I'm suspect of that. The online world is still reeling from eBay breach, but Spotify is now pushing online auctioneer deeper into the tech news pages as it reports a hack of its own. The music streaming service on Tuesday revealed unauthorized access to its systems and internal company data. Spotify CTO Oscar Stale said that the company has launched an investigation into the breach. Our evidence, our evidence shows that only one Spotify's user has been accessed and this did not include any passwords, financial, or payment information. He wrote in his, bra his blog last week, we have contacted this one individual. Well, uh, it goes on to talk about downplaying the breach. Armed with this information, uh, Stahl said that his company is asking certain Spotify users to re-enter their usernames and passwords to log in as a general precaution. Again, you can read that, but uh, I guess the point I'm trying to make, and I make it every single week, is that uh, you can never be too careful when you're using the internet because everybody's been hacked, and if they say they haven't, then they just don't know that they've been hacked. Speaking of hacking, this one is like, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I read the article twice. It's, it's very entertaining. Uh, I'll just read you a little bit. Again, you can go in the show notes and read the whole article. Top computer hacker called Sabu wins leniency. Get this now. This guy is a convicted criminal of hacking, okay? New York, a top computer hacker who helped investigators disrupt at least 300 cyber attacks on targets ranging from the United States Armed Forces and Congress to a TV network and video game maker was spared an additional prison time, any additional prison time Tuesday after prosecutors ordered, argued for leniency. Hector Xavier Monsignor, known online as Sabu, could have faced more than 26 years behind prison. They reduced his sentence to what he had already served, which means Monsignor was a free man after his sentencing and hearing in Manhattan Federal Court. However, he'll remain under supervised release for one year. Federal prosecutors argued uh, that Monsignor uh, merited far less punishment because he was an extremely valuable and productive cooperator who helped led us to the arrest and conviction of eight co-conspirators. They did not specify the targets saved from a potentially crippling cyber attack as a result of Monsignor's cooperation, but they estimated in a government sentencing memorandum filed Friday that his actions presented at least, at least a million dollars in loss to these victims. Fascinating article. You've got to go on to read the whole thing. I don't want to take up too much time on this. But uh, the bottom line is these hackers are so knowledgeable, uh, more knowledgeable than, unfortunately, uh, uh, some of our high security experts, FBI uh, included, you know, so on and so forth, that uh, it, it behooves these people to, to turn into good guys and help them because they know so much more because they've actually done it. So it's very, it's, it's very scary. It, it's just, it's insanity, but that's what it is. So let's move on. Here's another interesting article that I've been following for quite some time, but copyright trolls suffer big loss. Electronic Frontier Foundation Parker Higgins explained why a federal appeals court in Washington, D.C., decision has knocked out the upinnings of the business model used by copyright trolls in their campaigns to shake down accused infringers. Essentially what a troll is, is it's a company, person, or organization that will send out uh, 
blanket legal action threats uh, via email, via the mail, whatever it may be, and it will say something to the effect that we know or have reason to believe that you've been downloading illegal music, illegal movies, whatever it may be, and uh, rather than go through a court case, we will ask you to spend, uh, to send us three, four, five, six, ten thousand dollars, and uh, you'll agree never to download a, another thing illegally, and we'll let you go. And it terrifies a lot of people. And uh, this article is very fascinating, but uh, they found out that what they were doing was, was somewhat illegal, but uh, the case being the court's ruling is a major blow to trolls, but probably won't have much effect on other copyrighted litigation. After all, a few plaintiffs go after thousands of unknown users, internet users at a time. There are, of course, some high-profile high exceptions between 2003 and 2007 when the RIAA, that's the Recording Association of America, sued over, uh, over 30,000 individuals. So uh, it's an interesting case, but here's, here, here's a point. Uh, the court's decision uh, in an article by Kashmir Hill uh, that claims Prenda Law, a firm closely linked to AF Holdings, has made something to the tune of $15 million over three years of settling lawsuits. The model works because these trolls bring enormous volumes of lawsuit. Research indicates uh, that another uh, pornography group, Malibu Media, is the nation's most prolific copyright lawsuit uh, filer, responsible for more than a third of all copyrighted litigation over the past year. Fascinating article. Uh, makes good reading if you have nothing else to do. And now for some freebie stuff. I found the coolest freebie this week. It's an app, and uh, it will run on pretty much anything. And what it is, is it's called, I'm not making this up. I couldn't possibly make this up. It's called Camel, Camel, Camel. Camel, Camel, Camel .com. Welcome to the Camelizer. When you browse to a product page at any supported retailer, the Camel icon in your toolbar will be enabled. Click the camel icon and you'll gain immediate insight into the pricing trends of the product in question. You can even sign up, which I did, for a price drop alert via email and or Twitter. It's supported, the supported retailers are Amazon, Best Buy, and Newegg. This is a very small, unobtrusive browser enhancement that helps make one informed uh, purchasing decisions by using long-term price history and data to determine what the good price is and what a bad price is. So essentially what you do is you load this app onto whatever browser you have and if you have a wish list like I do on Amazon, just things I want to keep track of, and something on that wish list changes in terms of price if it jumps up or jumps down, this will automatically notify you which is absolutely astonishing and it works so well. I got three camel 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 alerts uh, yesterday in my email that told me that the product that I was looking at dropped five cents. Well, that was no big deal per se, but uh, the truth of the matter is it works really, really well, and uh, it's a very cool app, and it's free, so check that out. Speaking of free apps, uh, here's one for, the, uh, for iTunes, and it's, uh, it's kind of a neat app. It's called Lightly, and uh, what this will do is add gorgeous film-inspired tones to your photos in seconds. It will adjust crop, exposure, uh, it will adjust, it will crop, it will change your exposure, it will sharpen your photos, it will add vibrance and vignettes, whatever you want. It's easily, uh, will allow you to share Instagram and other apps, it will, uh, it fixes sharing really large images, it will do it automatically for you, and other performance improvements and bug fixes are in the latest 1.0.4 app. So check this out, it's very cool, and if you take a lot of photos, and you want to share them on Facebook or Instagram, this is the app to do it. It's just been revised. It's called Lightly, L-I-T-E-L-Y, 100% free on iTunes. Check it out. Now, there is not one for, there's not a, a Lightly app for iTunes, but uh, don't go away. Uh, I think we have some other stuff here to show you on that. Uh, this is called uh, another app, Do Not Call Registry, and you're probably familiar with that. Uh, what you should know about the Do Not Call Registry, essentially you have to have a registered phone number, they will verify the registration, and then you'll able, you're able to submit a complaint if someone should call you, and this is totally free to sign up for. 
Uh, it's sponsored by the Federal Trade Commission, so if you're getting a lot of annoying calls, you just need to go onto this website. It's do not call gov and put your information in and uh, no one will call you. If you want to get a little bit more involved, this is a cool one. Again, I did not make up this name. It's called No More Robo. Stop Robo Calls. No More Robo Blocks Annoying Robo Callers and telemarketers, telemarketers from Reaching Your Phone. And best of all, of course, it's free. So they have blocked over 3 million calls to date. It's easy. A simple one-time setup activates uh, No Robo Call on your current phone line. Caller ID is not required. It doesn't block school closing because if it's snowing you want to know if the school's closed you don't want to miss that robot call it doesn't block out doctor's appointments prescription reminders weather advisories and other legal robo calls it's free there's no charge no strings attached and uh, it's uh, sanctioned by quite a few popular companies so uh, check that out it, it, it looks pretty cool I have not done it yet now our last freebie is called uh, Crypto Cat, and this is pretty cool. Private chat can be easily and can be easy and accessible. CyboCat is a fun, accessible app having encrypted chat with your friends right on your browser and mobile phones. Everything is encrypted before it leaves your computer. Even the Crypto Cat network itself, it can't read your messages. This is totally free, and you can put this on Chrome, Firefox, Safari. Uh, Opera or your OS X system and uh, essentially it will keep everything nice and tight and encrypted totally free definitely check that out now I mentioned a little bit why a little while ago that I had another app uh, that worked like lightly uh, and I don't see where that is I had another app for you but it's mm, I must have lost it I'll have to put it in next week's show but there is another app that's very similar to uh, to this Lightly that I'll that I'll tell you. Actually, if I find it, I'll put it in the show notes. That works on the Android system. So now we're going to get to uh, the gadget of the day. And what I decided to do is I had a lot of responses uh, last uh, two shows ago when I did the uh, the Roku stick, if you remember. And this is what the uh, the Roku stick kind of looked like. And I had a lot of questions. What's the difference between the Roku? USB stick and also the uh, the Roku 3 so today we're going to show you what those differences are between the stick and the Roku box uh, the good news is, is that they both receive the same amount of channels so if you're worried that you buy this one and it won't get the same amount of channels as this one that's that's not the case they both get the same amount of channels the difference becomes actually in processing speed and I think I erroneously said that the stick was the fastest Roku and I was incorrect uh, I misspoke. It's actually the Roku 3 is the fastest. It's actually five times faster than the stick. And when I say faster, I mean if you're going to use Netflix, for example, and you're going to use the stick, uh, literally this takes maybe two minutes-ish, uh, depending upon your speed and a lot of other variables, for the Netflix to come up. It comes up and it streams fine. There's no problems with it. But if you use the Roku 3 box and you click it, it's almost instant. So. The difference in that is the processor that's in this, and obviously you can see from the size of it that this will have a lot more electronics in it than this will, and that's actually the case. So that's one of the main differences. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually switch over uh, and show you a little movie right now about the Roku 3, and then we'll talk about it. And I'll show you a side-by-side -side comparison physically as to what the differences are. There's slight nuances that make each product different. Uh, they both work fine. I use both of them and I have no complaints or uh, any problems with either device. They're just different. So let's take a quick look at this uh, Roku 3 uh, uh, movie here. I'll blow this up for you. There we go. Mike, you can Meet the fully loaded Roku 3, our fastest, most powerful player yet. Use motion control to play games like Angry Birds Face. And use the included headphones to watch late night flicks without disturbing the rest of the household. The Roku 3 comes fully loaded with 1080p HD resolution, extended range wireless, Ethernet and USB ports, and so much more. The all new Roku 3, the new standard in streaming. There's a Roku for each and every one of us. Find yours today. Happy streaming.
So there we have the quick overview of what the Roku 3 box is. Now, there are quite a few streaming boxes out there. Obviously, there's the Apple TV, there's the Roku, there, there, there's tons of them out there. My opinion, the biggest bang for the buck is the Roku platform, end of story. And you can also watch The Gadget Professor because we have our own Roku channel on The Gadget Professor. So let's take a look at these two devices. This is the box, if we go to camera two, this is the box that the Roku 3 comes in. And I'm going to scoot around here while we stay on camera two and just give you a close up as to what, what comes in the box and, and what it looks like. So the first thing that you're going to see here is uh, there's your power cord. Everybody's familiar with that. And if we look in the back, uh, Let's get the right angle here. If you look in the back, you can see that the power cord just snaps into there like that. So we'll remove that so we don't have a lot of, very simple, we can handle that. Now, once the power's in, on the back, uh, there's a couple things. Uh, over here is your power cord, what we just pulled out. Obviously, in the middle is the uh, uh, internet connector. And this is how you set this up. This will go, thanks, Mike, this will set up uh, very easily. Uh, once you put your Ethernet cable in there, uh, it will set up to your Wi-Fi network. And then the output is actually right here. It's HDMI output. And then you can see it as I just tilted up on the very bottom right there, okay, there is a small SD card, a mini SD card right there, micro card, that you can put in if you have movies or anything on that. This box will stream this directly to your TV. So that's what it looks like also on the side you have a place for a USB stick, which is also nice. So if you have a hard drive, uh, any kind of hard drive, and if it has a USB on it and you have a ton of movies or photos or whatever it is, you stick it in here and this device will stream. So that's pretty much it. Now if you compare that to the stick, well the stick is totally different. The stick is, a, is basically uh, going to plug into your uh, HDMI and, and that's it. There's no other jacks on it other than your power. It needs power. So what I have here is the cord that it came with, and uh, one end sticks into the, into the USB stick, and the other end is going to plug into the wall to supply it power, or you can take this off, and if there's an extra USB port on your actual TV set, you can plug that in and it will power that. So those are the essential differences in the connectivity. Now, let's take a look at the remotes. Big difference in the remotes. First of all, on the stick, okay, this is your remote. And immediately you're going to notice that you have a couple buttons down here and if you look at the stick the remote control st stick from the Roku 3 it's it's different and the difference is is that over here you have uh, MGO, Amazon, Netflix and Blockbuster those are one clicks so if you want to immediately go to any of those channels all you do is just click the button and bang you're there the difference between this and again this is on the stick and this is the Roku 3 you can't do that there's no direct channel access however there's a couple unique things on this one you see the lanyard on there and there is no lanyard on this so like what's the big deal who cares about the lanyard well the reason the lanyards on there is because this allows you to do gaming on the Roku 3 so you want this stick so it doesn't you want this band so this the remote control stick doesn't go flying and the other thing that's unique about this remote control, which is not on the Roku stick control, is right here you have a very convenient volume control, which is awesome. And the reason you have the volume control is because on the other side, you have a connector for your purple headset, which plugs right into there. And now you have your head, your earbuds, and you can lay in bed, listen to the whatever's streaming on the Roku and not disrupt anybody else in that room. So that's a very, very cool feature. So those are the, the uh, basics in terms of connectivity between the two devices. And now what we'll do, just to make this simple, is we'll just show you the chart that Roku has and show you the distinctive differences between the streaming stick and the Roku 3. So uh, first difference is it's half the price. So the stick is 49 bucks whereas the Roku 3 is 100 bucks, So that's a big difference. So what do you get for that difference in money? Well, it says 1,000 plus entertainment channels. Doesn't matter what Roku you buy, whether it's the stick, Roku 1, Roku 2, or Roku 3. It's built in wireless. They all have that, doesn't matter. They all have the Roku search top uh, across the channels, so no big deal. They'll all do 
up to 1080p. No problem with that. They all have a remote control. We've just shown you some of the differences. And they will all send videos. All the Roku platforms will send videos, photos, and music stored locally on your smartphone to your TV via the Roku app. They all come with that. Now, here's where we get into a little difference. They all have dual band wireless except for the Roku 2. I'm sorry, the Roku 1. Uh, now, here's the difference between the Roku Stick and the Roku 3. The Roku Stick has a channel shortcut button, and I showed you that, uh, for Netflix, Amazon Instant Video, and more. Whereas the Roku 3 does not have that capability on the remote control stick itself. Uh, also, there's no remote jack for listening on the stick where there is for the Roku 3. And uh, you can cast to TV direct from Netflix and YouTube apps on either platform, either the stick or the Roku 3. So if you're watching YouTube uh, or Netflix, uh, you can just cast it right onto the, to the TV set. And that's kind of neat. Now, where we completely separate on the Roku 3, once again, you get the games where you don't on the stick. And again, you get the little wristlet here to hold that. So that, that's different. Uh, so you have motion control for the games. And what you don't get, which I happen to like because I like things quick, uh, this is the uh, processor that's five times faster. So let me be clear that the Roku 3 is five times faster than any of the Roku other platforms, other boxes, uh, because of the processing speed. And if you want speed and you don't want to wait, you're impatient, then you really want to spend the extra money and get the faster processor, at least five times faster according to what they're saying. And then last but not least, on this particular Roku 3, you have an Ethernet USB and micro SD slot. And I showed you that. You had the uh, micro SD slot there, and on the side you had the uh, basic USB slot where you can plug a hard drive or a stick or whatever you want in. So those are the main differences. Other than that, they're going to do the exact same thing and uh, they work real well. There's no question about it. So it's just a matter of functionality, which functions you want and also if you want to spend more money for it. But keep in mind, whichever platform you go, whatever Roku box that you buy, they're going to all get the same amount of channels. The difference mainly is in the speed, which is not that big of a deal. So you wait a minute for something to stream. You know, really, who cares? One thing I do like about the uh, Roku 3 that's really nice is the ability to just unplug the uh, speaker in your, in your TV. You don't have to touch anything, but as soon as you plug this in, it electronically disconnects and sends the sound directly to your ears, which is really nice if there's someone sleeping or you don't want to annoy everybody in the house or you're playing a game. It's a really nice feature and probably worth the $49 extra. So that will wrap it up today for The Gadget Professor. I hope you enjoyed the show. I enjoyed bringing it to you. I will see every, each and every one of you next Thursday night. So long from The Gadget Professor. The Gadget Professor is produced by Don Bain. Multimedia Communications, LLC. If you would like your product reviewed on The Gadget Professor or would like to appear on The Gadget Professor, contact us via email at thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. The opinions expressed on the program by the host, guests, call-in listeners, or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. And thank you for watching The Gadget Professor. Gadget Professor.